Hummel swinging around, trying to make sure the Demons don't get it back. Felton trying to put it, there it is! There it is, there's a goal for the Dayton Demons. Looks like Petriello was the last demon to touch it. Went to the right side of Michael DiLorenzo. One to nothing, Dayton. And if it does hold true, Petriello would pick up his 10th goal on the season. He was red hot last night, and now he's bringing it into the night. I, he must have kicked it to his, to his stick. Because I really, I'll be I thought he kicked it in at first, but he must have kicked it to the stick. The referees didn't even question it, and Williamsport wasn't arguing. So he must have gotten it to the stick. So um, he was able to get the hand-eye coordination and get it, get it in there to go and get the demons on top. Patrick. Sand in the middle against LaVia, and he will knock the face off back for Sanford and the Demons. Sanford pass it off. It's Pride. He can't jam it in. He it's does. in. Put it in for Ahmed Mafus. A goal and an assist tonight for Ahmed. His 17th goal on the season. We're tied at two. Mafus with a goal. He's got an assist tonight on the first goal of the game. Mafus was the last one in front of the outlaw goalie to dump it into the right side. Yeah, he De Lore the game up at two. De Lorenzo gave up the rebound, and uh, Mafus was right there. Actually, Mafus uh, broke a stick putting it in. <laughs> so he had to go get a new twig after he put it in, but he was able to put that in uh, just well enough to uh, get it off there. Uh, nice shot by Marcus Pride. It's the Demons with it again. In minute 10, they want the lead back. It's left for Jason Hill. Hill at the slot. He'll put it in. Jason Hill puts it in as Oki had his hands tied. Three to two, Dayton. They were more worried about who Hill was going to pass it to. That's what they had marked the other two guys, and they left Hill all alone. And they were more worried about if Hill was going to pass it. And Hill says, well, I don't need to pass it. I'll put it in myself. And he did. And the Hill. Demons take the lead. Hill with his 14th goal on the season gives Dayton the lead. Another one goal lead for the red and black. Three to two, uh, Demons. Just a minute. It touched the protective net as Hoban gets it away. That's Ramage passing over to his left. It's Hoban now. Hoban far side trying to knock it away. Fleecek tries to pick up the loose puck. And with it now is Shot. Shot puts it on. Four to three, Dayton has shot. Records goal number seven on the season. He's got 20 points for this Dayton squad as he gives the Demons a 4-3 lead with 16.04 left in the second period. All in the back, that was all in the backhand. All on the backhand and he was able to put De Lorenzo to the post and he, De Lorenzo didn't really give him a lot of space to shoot at, but uh, that was absolutely tremendous, uh, tremendous backhand to find that open net and uh, get the Demons back on top. Four to three, up forward for Jason Hill. Hill now skates past the Dayton Demons logo. He's now on the far side. Leaves it for Fleecek. Fleecek shot, nice stop by the goalie. And Fleecek gives it for Felton. Felton with the goal. Felton with goal number 10 on the season. And we're tied at five. Power play goal for the assistant captain in Jesse Felton. Yeah, the initial shot was Fleecek. Just like you said, Fleecek was trying to pound it in. And Felton was able to follow it up. And De Lorenzo um, coughed, up the, uh, coughed up the rebound and uh, gave it right to Felton. Went right on Felton's stick and an open net for him to look at. And uh, somebody like Jesse Felton doesn't miss that. So um, back and forth we go. And we are back tied again. Tied. And it's Pride, Pride, and it's a dumper for Petriello. Petriello with another goal tonight. He's got two, one away from the hat trick. Six to five, Dayton Demons. That was absolutely tremendous of using the entire ice, using the entire width of the rink. Mafus finds Pride on the other side, uh, finds Pride on the other side, and then Petriello on the Absolutely on, tremendous on the backhand. And that is the absolute, that's the second demon backhand goal that we've had tonight. And it's, that was absolutely tremendous 
uh, power to be able to put that in. And now the Demon's back on top again. But you know what? I don't think we're going to have this going to stay that way for long. It's just going to keep going, and we're just going to ha keep having more goals. Six. We're not even halfway through the Ah, the Williams Park goalie and DiLorenzo. Demon set up shop again. Nets trying to hand it over. Slipping a little bit was check. He's still on the far side. Sanford, he's up! And the ref says it's a goal! Sanford dumps it off and in, knocks the goalie's water clean off the net. 7 to 5, Dayton. A power play goal for double five, Jane Sanford. That's not a usual spot for Sanford. Sanford's usually running the point. He's never usually in the slot like that. And he was wide open, and it actually hit him in the skate first. He had to readjust, but he quickly got it to his forehand and, and made him pay. And the Demons are now up by two. But we still got a lot. That's why the fans were all excited. They just didn't see each other. And it's Nina trying to dump it in. Dayton clears it out on the goal crease. It would have been Needham with the goal, but it was Dayton with a smart play. Fountain dumps it in. Fountain with his second goal on the period and the night. Eight to five, Dayton. Fountain has number 10, number 11 in the bag as a three goal lead for the Dayton Demons. This is transition hockey, and this is exactly what the Demons do. As they transition from defense to offense about as quick as any team as I have ever seen. And it all started with, the, with um, the puck going behind Festa, but not going over the line, getting back up from Centella to keep it out. And Centella gets it out, clears it out, and starts a three on two going the other way with Felton being able to capitalize on it. Now a three goal lead for the Demons, and it's all going from defense to offense very, very quickly. And Jesse Felton gets the Demons up by three. Seleski with a puck for the outlaw. It's now Dayton out of the neutral zone. Centella passes up. It plays on a bounce. Hill watches Arnott chase it. Arnott Jr. has it on the far side. Metz with the chase. Gets it lodged away. Felton to Hill. Felton, Felton, dumper in. And Felton has a hat trick. Throw your fuzzy hats. Throw your baseball caps. Throw your beanies on the ice. Felton has three goals. And Dayton leads nine to five. That is unselfish hockey at his finest. Felton to Hill, back to Felton. Felton with the dumper. In it goes. Nine to five, Demons. Nobody. It up. They well, just it, scraped it around. Well, it, there's a shot. It in. It's in for Seth Ronsberg. Ronsberg plays it off the bounce off the uh, face off. Ronsberg with his fifth goal on the season. Give him 10 points. 10 to five, Dayton. There's that double digits we haven't seen since the uh, second Danville series here at Hera. That was right off the face off and Ronsberg was right in the left wing and he just went in on it uninvaded. And it was actually kind of odd. It was not going into the slot. He actually went towards the boards because that's where Ronsberg was playing on the left wing. and. I 20. take, I, well, yeah, it, it, you're right. It'll be four on three. Somehow they put two minutes up on each side. Hooking the call on Oki, I believe. That's Hoven. Oh, they Diving call. as Fleacek puts it up and in. 11 to six. Fleacek with the goal. His first on the night and on the season. Fleacek's got 18 now. 11 to 6, Dayton Demons. Yeah, and all started with Hoban on the point. Hoban was able to get that in there, and Fleacek was on the on the right side. Here for the coach, it's Mark Lefebvre, and you're listening to the postgame show here on Dayton Demons TV. Coach, 11-6 win over the Outlaws. A great sweep, uh, two games against the Outlaws here at Hare Arena. It was a wild win. Um, you know, 
we're just finding ways to win, it, and it's uh, it's exciting. I mean, our team's exciting. It's exciting to watch. Exciting as a coach to watch. Uh, you know, we never give up. We play, uh, you know, a full 60 minutes to score goals, and um, you know, we're always, we're a threat. We're a threat every time we're on the ice. So we've got three lines that can score goals. We've got defensemen can score goals, and uh, you know, it's fun for as a coach to watch. And um, you know, I'm excited about our team, and I'm really glad we got the wins. What were some of your favorite moments of tonight's game and also last night's game, which the Dayton Demons won 7-5 to five over Williamsport? I don't even know where to begin. Um, so there's so many I could pick out. You know, a lot of guys contributed. Uh, everyone got in on the score sheet, I think, this weekend. And, uh, you know, even Ryan Ramage getting a game-winning goal last night. He's, you know, he didn't practice with us. He only drove into town yesterday. And we only signed him, uh, you know, Thursday night. And, uh, you know, that was one moment. Uh, you know, Jesse Felton's hat-trick tonight. Uh, you know, what can I say for about Ahmed from Mafus? He's been excellent all season. Again, he was excellent this weekend. Nick Petrie, I can go down the list. Everyone contributed. Everyone was great this weekend. Uh, a question. Have you ever seen a player go after a goalie and actually take down the opposing goalie? <laughs> I've seen a couple times. Um, it's a little different when, it, when that happens, but uh, I know the fans love it. Um, it's, it's, uh, it. It brings another element to the game, but it, it's exciting when that happens. So with the win, Dayton has won all nine of their home games and also on a six-game winning streak, which started a couple weeks ago at Danville. Can you talk to us about that uh, five-game road trip? Um, you know, we played four of them in Danville, so I think we're sick of going there and uh, already. But, you know, wins are wins, and it doesn't matter what building you're playing in. It, you know, as long as you get the full maximum points, that's all that matters. And uh, it was a good little road trip for us, um, you know, Get all those games, uh, you know, four of the five anyways, four in Danville. You know, we had a tight one here with Williamsport in their rink. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the points there, but, you know, we can bounce back well. We've, you know, we've won six on the trot now. We talked a little bit about what happened before this home series. Can we talk a little bit about after this home series? There's three home games next week, one against the Dashers of Danville and two against the Privateers of Thousand Islands. What are you looking forward to that three games uh, set? Uh, more wins, uh, hopefully. So, uh, you know, it's right before Christmas, and, you know, players get to, uh, they go into a bit of a lull. They see the Christmas break coming up, so we got to, you know, keep the guys focused to get three more wins uh, n next weekend. And, you know, I expect a tough match against Danville. I expect tough games against TI. They're a tough team to play. So I'm, I'm hoping for a big weekend and uh, against some good clubs. Now, this is just in from an hour before game time that the Cape Cod Bluefins, as of December 17th, 2012, will move to center of New York and will be known as the New York Blue Fins. Do you have any uh, thoughts upon the uh, move of Cape Cod? Well, it's unfortunate for a franchise to be, uh, you know, in a little bit of financial trouble. Um, but those things happen. That's, you know, with the economy now these days. Um, you know, minor pro hockey and minor pro sports in general, the, you know, those things are going to happen. But, you know, they found a solution. Um, that's, this is probably the best case scenario right now for, that, for the league and for that to happen. Uh, I hope it doesn't, you know, you know, be too much of a hassle or, you know, too much of a of a change for everybody else. Obviously, some games are going to change and the schedule is going to change a little bit. But, you know, we need six teams. You want six healthy teams. And I think at the time, this is the best solution for the league. So you heard here, six teams stay in the Federal Hockey League. And according to the press release on the website, New York will play all their road games and a couple home games at neutral sites. So that's a little bit about the uh, news around the Federal Hockey League. Two great wins against the Williamsport Outlaws. We're back Thursday night against the Danville Dashers. Coach, thanks for the interview. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're listening to the Ohio Sports Radio Network.